that's her. Ain't you? Yeah. Let's go. Money. We don't want money. Then what do you want? You. We're not going to hurt you. Unless you start screaming. And nobody's going to hear the shot either. Come on, keep going. we got a car right over there. Come on, honey. No, I must speak to the marshal personally. Well, he's very busy now. If he could just tell me what it's about. Well, it's about a friend of his from Cochise. Now, you go right in there and tell him that Mary Jo Ullman is missing. Mary Jo Ullman? Oh, oh Marshal. Uh, you remember me? Uh, Ed Parker. You in the motel next to where Mary Jo and her husband have their cafe. How's everything in Cochise County? Oh, but I don't live there anymore. I bought the Sands and Cactus Motel right outside of Tucson. I live here now. Wonderful. Now, suppose you tell me all about Mary Jo. What's this I hear about her being missing? Suppose we start at the beginning. Well. Robbie and Mary Jo came to Tucson for the rodeo and stayed with me. Well, they always stay with me when they come to Tucson. Oh, but the fight they had in their room yesterday morning was the worst ever. Mrs. Parker, do you have any idea what the fight was about? Tex Gunther. <laughs> oh, wild horse Tex? She and Tex were quite the thing before she married Robbie. Oh? No accounting for case. Well, Robbie accused her of wanting to take up with Tex again, and Mary Jo said she just came to the rodeo to see Gloria Sawyer, the movie queen. Oh, yes, now I remember. Mary Jo was almost her double. In fact, it seems to me like she told me one time she'd go to Hollywood to meet her. Oh, well, she didn't have to go to Hollywood. Gloria Sawyer came to Tucson to the rodeo, and that's why Mary Jo was here. Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh, well, I'm afraid very little, Mrs. Parker. You see, this doesn't come under the jurisdiction of the United States Marshal's Office. What's jurisdiction got to do with it? I thought you were a friend. And the last thing Robbie said to her was that if she went to that rodeo, it would be the last place she'd ever go. And the very idea, acting like that after my coming all the way down here and trying to help her things out. Whew. Why do you have to keep my hands tied? What are you afraid of? You two don't even look like kidnappers. Look, I'll tell you something. I'm married to a man who wouldn't pay two cents reward for me. In fact, he'd pay you to... Is that who's paying you? My husband? Answer me! You two don't have brains enough to be doing this alone. Did Robbie put you up to this? It has to be him. I'm not worth 10 cents to anybody. You know, you talk too much. Stop! 
Frank Morgan. Hi, Robbie. What are you doing back in Cochise? Looking for your old job as sheriff? No. No, we're just driving through. Oh, this is my deputy, Tom Ferguson. Hi. How are you? How's everything going, Robbie? Oh, just fine. How's Mary Jo? Oh, just great. You know Mary Jo. Yeah. She around? I'd like to say hello to her. Well, no, she's back at the house. A little bit under the weather. She's probably asleep. Oh, that's too bad. I was looking forward to meeting her. Frank says she's a spitting image of Gloria... What's her name? Sawyer. The movie actress? Robbie, you're a liar. What? Mary Jo has been around this place for three days. She's the only reason I come in this dump. Looking at her kind of makes the world an all right place. You get out of here. You're the law, ain't you? U.S. Marshal. Ask him how come he and Mary Jo went to Tucson, only one come back. The wrong one. If it's any of your business, we had a fight. No law against a husband and wife fighting, is there? Where is she, Robbie? Well, I don't know. But it won't be the first time she's pulled this disappearing act after a fight. She just does it to worry me. Aren't you worried? And why should I be? If she wants to come back, she will. She's got no place else to go. Well, if she doesn't come back by morning, you'll be sure to call the sheriff, won't you? Yeah, sure, Marshal. Tom. Dear stupid, what kind of saps do you think we are? We've seen Gloria Sawyer in the movies. Now we got her. We're cutting in for 50 grand. We'll be in touch. Who's stupid now? No. No, they're all wrong. Now well, let's have the whole story, Robbie. All my life I've been in nothing. I can get lost in a room with four people, but I'm not going to lose Mary Jo. Get to the point. Well, I figured I'd make her forget Tex Gunther by being a hero. So I arranged with these two characters for a fake kidnapping. Then I was going to charge in and rescue her. Well, these characters think they've kidnapped Gloria Sawyer. Why 
doesn't Mary Joe tell them who she is? Maybe she can't talk. Who are these characters? Van and Red. I don't know their last names. Where can we find them? They came into the cafe one night. We got to talking. It was the night that Mary Joe told me she was going to the rodeo whether I liked it or not. I must have been steaming because they noticed it. Well, one thing led to another and I gave him a hundred dollars. All right. Never mind, Tom. And were you locking him up? I won't help Mary Joe any. He's our only contact with Red and Van. Okay. Let's go. I sit out here getting madder every minute. That creep. Who? Who? Our partner. A hundred bucks. I got a good mind to cut him out of it altogether. <laughs> I like that. What's not to like? First thing in the morning, you call him. He should have that money. Suppose he doesn't have it. Then he'll get it. I want this thing wrapped up by tomorrow night. Now, you tell him that. Okay. Aren't you gonna feed me? You know, those movie dolls are used to being fed on schedule. You ever seen her in any pictures? Mm-mm. I saw her on TV once. How was she? Eh. They never look as good in person. Hey, now, just a minute. What do you think you're up to? Well, you've made a mistake. We have? Yes. You think I'm Gloria Sawyer. Well, that's what we think, all right. Oh, well, everybody mistakes me for her. They do? Yes, it's kind of a local joke where I come from. You know, it would be a real funny joke if she was telling the truth. Yeah, the biggest chuckle of the year. But it is the truth. If you don't believe me, call my husband in. If you was telling the truth, lady, we wouldn't call anybody. We'd just leave you out here. Dead. So now you tell us. Are you that movie queen or ain't you? Come on, talk to the man. Almost, almost had you fooled, didn't I? I'm not so sure you're fooling now. It was a pretty good act, wasn't it? The TV thing I saw. She did a little dance. You do that little dance. Now. Oh, but I portrayed so many roles in TV, I just don't... Do remember. that dance! Oh, you mean, you mean uh, this one where, uh, where I walked around and kind of did a, a cha-cha-cha? <laughs> They call. Be sure you remember exactly what to say. It's almost noon. They should have called by now. There's an APB out in his description of Red and Van. What about the movie actress? Gloria Sawyer. Safe in her home in Bel Air, California. Yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting to talk to you. Did you get it? Look, Red, this is a party line, 17 people on it. That deal we made for the tractor, I'd rather talk to you about it in private. What tractor? Look, take down this number and call me in exactly two hours. Listen, all I want from you is a straight answer. Now, did you get it? All right, all right. In two hours. What's the number? Midland 01020. You did that pretty good. Let's go. Maybe he suspects something. The moment he dials that number you gave him, we'll start tracing the call. Whatever you do, don't mention your wife. Keep them believing they've got the Sawyer girl. I'll set things up just the way... Hi, Red. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk now. Did you get the money or not? I'm making a pickup tonight. 
You're coming with me. Why? I'm not going to risk it all along. You went on in with big pay? You've got to do some of the dirty work. If you think you're getting $50,000 just to hold some movie star prisoner, you better grow up, Red. It's no two for a dime heist. Well, I'll get rid of her, that's all. You do that and you'll really be out of the money. Okay, where do I meet you? Third and L, seven o'clock. You know my car. As soon as I pull up, you come over and hop in. Here it is. Call a fingerprint crew. Then we can find out a last name for Red. Nothing on the prints yet. Frank, if I don't meet him, he'll know something's wrong. You're gonna meet him. We're gonna pick him up in that street corner and bring him right back here. It'll be dark. If he doesn't see my car, he'll panic. You may lose him. Let me meet him. You can follow. You can get both of them. You mean you want us to risk your life, too? Don't you think I've got that coming to me? All right, Tom. Give him back his keys. Marshal Morgan to all units. Cars number three and four proceed to number one stakeout area. Car number seven proceed to number three stakeout area. And proceed with caution. I repeat, proceed with caution. taken real good care of her. Go release her first, then we'll make the pickup. Oh, no, we ain't. All right, never mind. Come on. We'll make the pickup now. That's better. Car 7 to Morgan. This is Morgan. Go ahead. Subject in contact, moving north on Elm toward the desert. Over. Attention all units. Cars 5, 6, and 8 proceed to number 4 stakeout area. But do not make contact with subjects. I repeat, cars five, six, and eight proceed to number four stakeout area, but do not make contact with subject. This could be a wild goose chase. Well, I hope not for Mary Jo's sake. Real big money. I'm going over there. They're right down there behind those trees. Oh, I always knew it, make good someday. I always knew it. <laughs> we ought to get out of here. We got to see if it's in here, don't we? They might come back. Just a quick look. Oh, look at that. Look at all that money. Come on, come oh. on. <laughs> Why should we split this three ways? Huh? There's more for the two of us. Yeah, but what about your friend? Who cares about him? Oh, now, wait a minute. We gotta get As back. As a matter of fact, who cares about you?
You all right, Robbie? Yeah, I'll be all right. What about Red? He's dead. He was supposed to lead us to marry Joe. If we don't get there, that other guy will kill her. What are we gonna do? We'll think of something. Come on. I should let you guys grab them at the corner like you wanted to. Like everything else I do, this idea petered out on us. Two sound control to Marshal Morgan. This is Morgan, go ahead. We've got the make on the fingerprints in the kidnap case. Harold Red Slade. Uh, forget about the description. Have you got any details on him? Well, yes, sir. He was in the mining business ten years ago and owned a small mine eight miles out in the desert just off Yucca Springs Road. That'll do it. Oh, it has to be the place. Tom, you call the coroner. Have him come out here and take care of that body. Right. Dick, take Mr. Oman into the hospital and have him booked. Right. Where are you going? I'm going to take Robbie's car and go out to that mine. I'll follow your car after I make the call in. Lady, you ain't got too much longer if anything goes wrong. Will you please stop saying that? Well, what do you know? Lady, you got lucky. Where's Red? Where's Red? Drop your gun, put your hands up. He's safe, in jail. I'd say that's quite a price to pay for a practical joke. Joke? This was all his idea, Mary Jo. He hired these men to kidnap you, then he was going to rescue you and play the hero. The whole thing back there. Oh, Frank, it's all my fault. What do you mean? Well, if I had acted more like a wife instead of a stage-struck schoolgirl, can I help him? Please. 